Yeah. Yeah. Man, I never disrespect you, but in the ring, I got a violation. Yeah. I'm ten times better than that. If he fucking even landed a punch on me, something ain't right. You feel what I'm saying? It's we clocked in. Yeah. You, you turn me up, bro. We <laughs> just came up with this shit. We yeah. said, you know what? We gotta get the people stuff. We clocked in with John No Play Phillips. Then who's gonna know how good I am? And that just make that just make the process that much longer to get that championship. They're gonna find out on the 23rd. I'm very special. I ain't talking about regular boxing. Very special. Mm -hmm. Can't have no floor to get behind me. So the whole floor to get behind me. The whole South get behind me. America get behind me. The world get behind me. We're taking up. <laughs> <laughs> Just got there with a full day of training. They go promote no plan. I gotta do that because I want people to have their eyes on me. Just like clock in. It's all like you clock in. Man. When I'm clock, when I wake up in the morning, Say my prayer, thank you God. I'm clocked in for my day. I'm focused. That was no plan. Because we clocked in with Delano Plan Phillips from Ebro, Florida, one of the best in the world. Come see why I say that September 23rd when I fight Anton Cobb on a Chris Stevenson Consecutive card. I'm going to completely dominate. I can't wait. This is going to be one for the ages. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, we're going we gonna, to we gonna dominate them, man. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Hey man, so look, you say you're gonna dominate. What, yeah. uh, what's your fight style like? You more like a Mike Tyson brawl? Like, I'm just about to take your head off? You uh -huh. technique, technical with it? Or how, uh -huh. how, how, how we rocking it? You feel me? Oh, uh, more, you know, me in that ring, I'm more of a thinker. Mm -hmm. I like to use my jab, I like to use my feet work. But I also like to be very aggressive because I know that if you're not aggressive sometimes, the judges can give it to the other guy. So me, I try to mix everything up into one. And just you know, put it all on my opponent at once, which is that jab, get that jab as a range finder, or use it as a deadly punch, as a power punch. Use my feet to get in and out, but make sure I stay in there to do enough damage so I won't be wasting my time and my energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How many rounds I got? It's gonna be a four round fight. I wish it was a six, because if it was a six rounder, I have more time to display more talent, but I guess I gotta display all my greatness in four rounds. So, you know. Me being who I am, I should be able to get the job done. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're the A side or B side? Well, coming in at the B side, but me personally, I'm the A side. It's only one side, and it's my side. I like that, I like that. Yeah. I rock with that, for sure. Uh, damn. So look, so you basically going in their backyard? I'm going in their backyard. You know, he's from Chicago, but you know, he's managed by Jay Prince and Shakur Stevenson. So, therefore, me and that the world, the people at, at that fight will know that he's with them. Mm -hmm. So therefore, me and they going to automatically be with him and against me. I don't care. He's been against me my whole life. Never made no difference to me. I'm going to do one thing, that's to dominate. And I ain't leaving until I do it. Mm -hmm. So they can be against me or they can be with me. I know my family with me, my team with me, and God is with me. And that's the only thing, that's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What got you in the box? What got me in the boxing was, well, I should have been boxing since I was three years old. That's when I really found my passion for the sport. But we ain't got no boxing gym going from. I'm from a small town in Eagle, Florida, on the outskirts of Panama City. You know, ain't no boxing around there. So, you know, it took a little time, but as I got older, I discovered boxing at the age of 18. Back at home or out here? Back in Panama oh. City. Okay. But I, I boxed in Panama City Beach for a little bit. Then I went to Atlanta to train before I got on my amateur fights. And then I went back to the coronavirus, and then I moved down here to Las Vegas. You know, that's when I really started getting that good work with all these good professionals. I was always a beast, because I always trained hard from the very first day. You know, I feel like I've been putting in 10 years of training just in these five years. So I always was a beast, because I always pushed it to the, the other limit. You know, so when I moved to Vegas, that's when I really started getting that, that good spawn with Devin Haney, Rosie. Rancis, Consecchio, all these good fighters, I've been getting that good spawn with them. So I had to shot my game from here to here. So moving about Vegas is the best move for me. You know, so yeah, man, I, I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be able to turn pro here. Cause that way, when I'm in Las Vegas, I get to work with these great fighters, like I said, with my great coach and bullet, I get a better chance on reaching my goals, which is to be a world champion, go down to history as one of the best ever, and be a first ballot hall of fame. You got a family uh, known for boxing, or are you the first one? I'm the first one, man. That's what makes it so great. That's why, that's why I say I'm the chosen one. That's why I know God blessed me to be somebody special, you know, because I'm the first one. Never, never, it's unheard of where I'm from to be a boxer. I never met a boxer before until I started boxing. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, I'm different. I'm special, and 
they're gonna find out come 23rd i'm very special i ain't talking about regular boxing very special they gonna they gonna really find out they don't know playing field gonna be a star i'm not doing this for the fame i'm doing this to change the life of me and my family and show the world what god can do and show how great i am because me personally i'm not saying i'm the greatest yet but shit, i know i am gonna be yeah facts so tell me this uh What's your goal with, uh, actually not, not your goal, <clears throat> who you shape your game after, your fighting style, or who you look up to, or who you, who's some of the guys that you really was like, yeah, I need to study from them? Uh, let's see, that's a pretty good question, man, because uh, where I'm from, from Panhandle, Florida, we already know who the, who the king of Panhandle, Florida, when it comes to box, Roy Jones Jr., and I'm right behind him. So Roy Jones Jr. is number one. Damn, more happy because I love the way he fight. I love his toughness. I love his ability. I switch stances. Floyd, because he's smart. She can really let the hands go. I got to pay the time to her the other day because the reach and the jab. So, not really my top five, but I like Pernell Whitaker because I feel like I got that Pernell Whitaker type defense when I want it. So, you know, it's really it's hard to say because there's so many great fighters that I can watch, even modern day fighters. Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. These guys, I learned from all these guys. So it's really, but like I say, Roy Jones Jr., number one. Number one. Nobody's better. He back in the crib. He back in the crib. I mean. You know what I mean? Pensacola, Panama City, Ebro, Florida, 100 miles apart. You know what I mean? I can drive there in, in an hour or two. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got to, me personally, I'm, I'm taking off where Roy left off. He was the champ. He's the man. He always been the man. But now I'm the man, too, for the panhandle. Can't handle Florida get behind me. The whole Florida get behind me. The whole South get behind me. America get behind me. The world get behind me. We take it on. But then my granddaddy said, he said, he said, grandson, if you're going to be doing this on your own, paying your own way to live your dream, why don't you go where the best is at, where you got the best opportunity to be somebody and what you're trying to be in? Uh, he said, go to Las Vegas. Hey, I took, a, I took a quarter. I took a quarter. I said, best two out of three. I flicked it up. Boom. Best two out of three to heads. Flicked it up. Land on heads. First time. I said, okay. Got two, got one more. Two more actually. I flipped it up, land on the tail. I said, oh shit, man on the tail again, I'm going back to Atlanta. Flipped it again, man on head. I said, man, God want me to go to Vegas. So here, you know, but like I said, I was training by, I was training with Catch World a little bit. I was at City Box with Army and them. Good people. You know, I was training over there for a minute. I started, I was probably training for about that, maybe a year, six, seven months to a year. Then I started when Roley came. He needed Southpaw sparring, and Roley was Bullet and Roley coach. Yeah, that's so that's why I met Bullet. That I was following Roley. He loved to work, but we never we didn't start working with each other until like a year after that sparring. Yeah. Because I left City Boston with the top ranked gym, and then Bullet was over there training Robert. Uh, yeah, Robert Merriweather. That boy could fight too. But yeah, he was training Robert Merriweather, and then I said, I said Bullet, because I didn't have a coach. I'm like, man, I'm doing this by myself. I'm beating everybody up though. But I was, I was training with Miguel. Miguel, you know, he got so much things going on. Miguel Diaz, we all know who that is. Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame cup man. I was training with him when he got so much going on, he couldn't really give me the time that he needed because he got a lot of issues outside of Boston that we ain't going to speak on. But, uh, so Bullet came. I said, Bullet, man, can you help me out? He already knew what I'm about. You know I'm a beast. You know I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. So he said, yeah, I can train you. He didn't take nothing. He told me he'll train me for free every day. So I've been working with Bullet for about a year, about two months now. And now we got a fight coming up. I mean, perfect timing. Like, the, the, the same week I asked Bullet to train me was the same week that I got the call from people that wanted to talk about uh, the rematch with uh, McCall. Yeah. I'm 10 times better now. If he fucking even land a punch on me, it, something ain't right. I'm a, like, I'm telling you, I'm so much better that it's amazing. I'm thanking God for it. I'm that, I'm, I feel like I'm about to be that guy. And I feel like these guys don't stand a chance. I feel like once I do this too, 
I you know, I don't respect him. It's just boxing, it's a sport. You know, as a man, I never disrespect him. But in the ring, I got a violation. And I feel like that's what's gonna happen. Amen. And I think that I gotta give a lot of credit to Bullet for his coaching. And Miguel Diaz too, because he turned me into a monster as well. Mm. Yep. Okay, okay. You say you respond with everybody. All the Every fucking body. Everybody. everybody that come through, they're gonna get that work. Who was uh who was some people that uh that you shocked and who was some of the people that uh you feel like uh came to work that made you shock them Oh, uh, Devin Haney. He made me, I feel like I shot him, but I feel like he, he shot me too. He made, I mean, he, he didn't really shot me because he was a champion when I sparred him. So yeah. I knew what he was about, but he didn't know what I was about because I was just nobody. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Devin Haney was one of them guys that made me know I had to sharpen up. I feel like I shot a lot of The rest is pretty tricky too, so I, it made, made, made my game better because now I got to think more. Uh, I feel like I shot Rollage, you know, because he hit with some pretty big punches. He hit me a whole lot my defense good, but when he did, like, he got power. Everything he throws is strong, so when they hit me, I can eat it. Yeah. You know, he might hit me. A lot of guys be how to get knocked out. You get hit in the neck, snap a little bit, and that's, you know, that whiplash. Yes. I get hit a whole shit, though, so it's like, I'm like one piece of solid steel. Yes. So I could take a good point of I shot him, how good I could take a point of how good I could go back at you. You know, so that let me know I had a 10. That's why I'm not worried about no punches or nobody. And, uh, I feel like everybody I spar with, that spar with me, I feel like I shot them. Cause I feel like they know it, damn, this guy's pretty good. But a lot of them guys let me shot me too. Yeah. He let me know, damn, this, this is the real deal. These guys are the real deal, but they let me know I'm the real deal too. Type shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell me this, like, uh, is, uh, is sparring different from the bright lights? I would say it is. The only reason it, I feel like the only reason it is because of the smaller gloves and because of the crowd. It's more pressure. When the crowd is on you, I'm about to be, I might shine like the sun going in the gym. I might be shining like the like the brightest down, you know, like the brightest EVF. You feel me? But as soon as I get on them damn lights with everybody watching me, I might freeze up and get, you know, because I'm not built for the camera, I'm not built for the lights. But you know, I feel like if you really bought this. If you really train hard, you really believe in yourself, there won't be no difference. You might even be, you should fight better. Yeah. You know, especially when you got eight ounce clothes on, your life on the line, you should be able to dial into a different type of mode. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, when I fought at Duke Mason, I lost that one pretty bad, but it was a pretty good fight while it lasted. But I, I feel like I would, I was, I knew I didn't train hard enough because I was training with people, I didn't like they train the regiment for a good week and went on my diet, went on my sit up. I was, I was a weak body person. We mind and we body. So when you know that type of stuff, when you get under them lights, then you fold. But when you've been doing what you're supposed to do, shit, you gonna know you had no business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. And so when it comes to power too, if you can punch with 16, you can punch with H. If you can punch, if you can't punch with 16, then you, you can't punch with H. Man, I just had to throw that in there, you know. <laughs> I just had to throw it in there, you know. <laughs> I'm in it for the competition. That's why I like fighting nothing but people that actually got a name. I'm in it for the sport because I just like the sport of boxing. I like fighting, I like hitting the motherfucker, I like the motherfucker hitting me or trying to at least. Mm -hmm. I like, I just like to be able to oppose my will on somebody and they can't do nothing about it or they try to oppose their will on me and I can't do something about it. And if I can't, they let me know that I'm not who I am, who I think I am, and they give me general room to roll. It's just like challenges. I just like the sweat, I just like the pain, I just like the bloody noses that I haven't had one in a while, but I just like it. I just like everything about it when it comes to it. And I just feel like that's one of the most honorable things you can do. Is, is do even if it's construction work, anything you do that's just bust the sweat, it's just hard work, you give your all and honorable. I feel like, you know, shit. And you can you can achieve some sort of greatness in it. Shit, why not? Why not love it? Or, or be willing to, to die for it. Whatever you do, you should be willing to die for it. If you really want to do it, if not, you should be doing something else. You feel me? On me. Yeah, man, that's my question. I was so down here. Yeah, damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so, look, we talk about just diving in and, and really, like you say, you're going to give it your all or go home. You feel uh -huh. me? Um, what do you feel? How big is time and how big is being prepared for the moment? Oh, that's fucking. Oh, man. 
personal experience, I, I, I've been to down all the downs in boxing. I haven't been to all the ups, I ain't been to no ups yet. But I feel like I am after this fight, because I'm about to completely dominate, but I'm fucking got way better. But the downs, if you're not fucking training hard and you're not getting yourself physically and mentally prepared, you ain't got no business stepping in that ring because you're going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. Your body got to be strong enough to hurt somebody and withstand a punch. And your mental got to be strong enough to, okay, if he hit me, okay, it hurts, but I'm not stunned. I can take it. I, gotta, I can do whatever it takes to keep hanging in there and fighting. Or if I get tired, my body got to be physically in condition to make sure I can hang in there. Or if I get tired, my body got to be, my mind got to be in condition to push through. You know what I mean? So it's, you got to be prepared all the way around the board. You got to be in top condition mentally and physically. Because if not, you're setting yourself up for failure. And I know that firsthand when I thought I'd do with Mason, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was in great shape. I wasn't in the shape I should be in a fighting guy like him. When I fought, my, when I lost the second time, when the commentators even said during the fight that I won, I can't complain about it because I should have been in better shape. I was at the gym a whole week before because I was still down from the active amazing fight. So I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. So I lost it off of activity when everybody, you know, everybody thought I won, even the commentators said I won. But I can't complain about it because I should have did better. I got to give it to him because he did what he was supposed to do outside the, outside the ring. I didn't. So for preparation, number one. Preparation, mentally and physically. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. That's why uh, I train so hard, man. Every day, yeah. It's like, no, I know now. Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, uh. I'm telling you. Man, we 23 minutes in. Damn, I ain't know that, bro. Right, we gonna That's gonna get him all the best. But we're gonna fuck that by 10 times. So, so tell me this, uh. You building a brand. Yeah. Right? No plan. Exactly. How, as an athlete, how important it is to. Just like you train, how important it is to sacrifice outside the gym to create something bigger than what you're talking about, yeah. or what you're preaching. Yeah. Right? So you you build a brand. Yes, sir. How important is that to sacrifice your free time outside of just training? Yeah. Is it all is it, how do you feel about that? I feel like it's I feel like it's very important. Because like I said, like you say, you have to in order for you to be out there and seen by the public. That's why it's best to promote your brand and put your brand out there even when you don't feel like it because you want people to have their eyes on you and to follow you throughout your journey so you can make some money and achieve your goals. That's the most important thing out there. You know what I mean? Thanks. I feel like, shoot, that's... They say there ain't not a lot of money in boxing. Yep. Unless you look there. You exactly, talk, bro. You, you talk the food chain. And I feel like, this is me. I feel like, and it's not just in boxing, it's in any sport. Folks mad at Jake Paul for making uh-huh. money, right? Well, this nigga's entertaining. Yes, that's true. Okay. Yeah, he might not be a best fighter, but he's not, he not entertaining. He marketed way more than you. Yep. He put himself out there. Yep. He don't care what you think. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to see what a fat wallet. Uh-huh. And if he wanted to take your girl, he could. He could. He did it. <laughs> so, I don't see, I don't see yeah. a lot of folks, this is it's, uh, top out of Mike Tyson. Floyd, uh, uh, Roy Jones, yep. all those guys, a plethora of people, right? They're great promoters. They're great, great marketers. Great marketers, great promoters, yep. they're great speakers. Yep. Even when they're not speaking proper, uh-huh. they're speaking with confidence. They're speaking in a way that you want to listen. That part. You feel me? They, you ain't got to go that hard. My name is, you know, you ain't got to talk. As long as you say, you feel me? As long as you say some shit and they want to hear it, right. that's what it matters. I might be saying, hey man, I might get up and go shovel some shit across the road. If I say it in a way that's, that it sounds interesting, you gonna want to tune in. That part. You feel me? Right. So that's what that Jake Paul, bro, when it come to him, I, 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 
ain't got, I ain't used to anything like that, Paul, but the more and more he's been doing his thing, he ain't up no respect. Because he's he making money, he's marking himself, he ain't scared to fucking t to say what he wants. Mm -hmm. The man is, you know, he's a genius. I gotta give it to him. Yeah. He's a genius. What do you want people to know about you? And what do you want people to know about your brand? Uh huh. And. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. What I want people to know about me is I'm just a regular country boy that wanted something greater. And uh, I won't settle till I get it. And when I get it, I'm gonna keep going because it don't end there. You know, I'm just a guy that, you know, just like to fight, just like to box. I'm not doing it for me. I am doing it for me, but I'm also doing it for the people that love me, and the people that I love. And uh, I just want to make it, man. That's, that's just me. When you meet me, you don't expect too much. I'm just Dylan Phillips. Dylan, no plan for Phillips if you get in the ring with me. But other than that, I'm just Dylan Phillips, man. And, uh, when it comes to my brand, no plan, you know, that's just what it is, no plan. You don't play about nothing. I want people to say, when people hear no plan, I want them to know that, okay, it's time to dig deep. It's time to get sick. It's time to make it happen. We only got one life to live. We ain't gonna waste no time. You know what I mean? Can't waste no time. We only got one life to live. That's what no plan is all about. Do whatever you gotta do to live your dream or do anything you want. No plan. I'm not gonna play about nothing. I'm gonna make it happen. And if I don't make it happen right then, I'm gonna try again, I'm gonna try again. So I'm not playing around. Eventually, you have to you have to take notes. And that's really what, it, uh, what it's all about. You feel me? That's, that's what it's all about. That point, that point, that point, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's a sign off. That's a one more outro. Uh huh. And then, uh, let them know your birthday to your clock in date, man. Let them know your clock in date. 0813. And what it mean? You know what that means? That means the day greatness was realized. Because I was almost wasn't supposed to be here. I could have died at the day, but they seen greatness in me and they said, you know what, we gotta have we gotta bring them into the world to change to make a difference. That's what 0813 means. That's the clock in day of some greatness that's yet to happen. But it will happen. Just watch and see. Stay patient. Stay professional. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm fucking with it. I'm fucking with it. That's all I said. I like it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, of course. I appreciate that, though. Nah, I appreciate you shooting, nigga. Like I said, look, this is the right now. Uh huh. This ain't the main stage. Uh huh. You're walking into the main stage. Exactly, bro. Because that's going to put you on the main stage. You know what I mean? That's going to give them a preview of what the main stage is going to look like for you. You feel me? So, now they know what they expect. You got to practice. Exactly, bro. You got to put in the hours. Yeah, yeah. And then hours I had up when the uh, ice hits you. You ain't gonna be ready for it, bro. You feel me? Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, man. Don't tell me. Show me. We try to kid, bro. Oh, me. No, no, no plan, bro. We outside. We in this motherfucker. We in this motherfucker.